John chapter 15, and let's start reading at verse number one. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth much fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye, there it is again, abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, he that, here it is again, abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Well, look at this in verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Look at verse 7 again. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye, sh you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall, here it is again, abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments. And the last one, abide in his love. So guess what the first point of tonight's message would be? Abiding in Christ. That's the key, one of the keys to our Christian growth. And how many times do we see that? In these verses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a key word. Christianity, it is not a religion. It is not a ritual we do. It is not a rite of passage. It is a relationship with a living Savior, and that Savior's name is Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ. And 1 John 15, it teaches us as Christians, we should get to know God. We should walk with God. We should fellowship with God. And we should serve God. People say all the time, I, I, I want to really grow in my walk. Abide in him. That's the first key for tonight. Um, here's God's will. For your life. We spoke a little bit about it last week, but here's God's will. Look at verse two. People ask all the time. I just want to know what God's will is. I want to make sure I'm in the will of God. Well, here, verse two, here's how you can be in the will of God. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Here's what God's will is for your life and for my life as a Christian. Bear fruit. <laughs> you can be in God's will every single time if you commit to bearing fruit for him. Uh, look at verse 8. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Um. Disciple, it's the root word of discipline. There's some learning. There's some disciplining in being a disciple. Um, anything that you study, you're a disciple of, a student of, and you are, if you're in music, you're studying that instrument and you're bearing forth fruit each week when the teacher sees your progression or not your progression. And, and, and the teacher will know. If you're going to be a disciple of Christ, verse 2, bear fruit. Verse 8, bear a lot of it. <laughs> bear much fruit, and you can be in God's will. I know I should grow as a Christian. Everybody knows that. How? Abide in Christ, not other things. Now, what is the key? So we have our, we have our main heading, abiding in Christ. We know that God's will for our life to abide in him is to bear fruit, much fruit. But what is the key 
to that abiding and bearing fruit. What's the key to getting that done and being in God's will? Look at verse number seven. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Now look at verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments. And I abide in his love. One word. The key to abiding is obeying. <laughs> I mean, it really is. If you obey God's word, you are abiding in God's word. You are therefore in the will of God. And by default, you will bear fruit. Christians don't have the people make this accusation against us and say, well, Christians don't have any love. All you should do is love. If you're obeying God, you are loving God. Just because somebody else or just because a lost person or the world doesn't want to abide in God's commandments and wants to push them aside and disregard them. You are not unloving if you decide to go against the grain of the world and obey God's commandments. <laughs> You're abiding in Christ. You're not to try to abide and fit in with others. Our goal is to abide in him and obey him. Because after all, if we don't obey him, we are obeying somebody else. So let's do our best to obey God. And we don't need to open this can of worms. We, we, we are all aware that we understand, and, and it's not the point of the message to even go down this trail, but we understand that that doesn't mean be mean-spirited to people. That doesn't mean to be arrogant or rude or, you know, uh, haughty or spiritually puffed up with pride. We don't mean any of that. We just mean honestly obeying what God says. And if that offends somebody, well, that offends somebody. But we want to ab abide in Christ. That's the first point of tonight. All right, what else can we do to grow in the Lord? Let's go over to the book of Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. The Bible says that ye put off concerning, 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 the former conversation, the old man. You remember how you used to talk before you were saved? You remember the language that you used? Do you remember the conversations that you would have? Do you remember the points of emphasis and the, the, the topics that you would always talk about? Well, put that off. <laughs> That former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Your conversations now are different. The language that you use is different. The topics that you talk about have more value. Now, some of the stuff, granted, that we talked about before we were saved isn't sinful. And there's nothing wrong with it. And certainly we carry some of that over. But those corrupt ones, those conversations that really had no value at all and were either dirty or wrong or sinful and all, all that is a sign. We now have a new conversation because we are a new creature. So to grow in the Lord is to not only abide in him, but also it's this putting off and putting on. And in verse number 22, if we can look at that again, we put off the former conversation. And then verse 24, we put on the new man. Look at verse number 25. It goes on. 
Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. That's a tough one. <laughs> I usually like to be angry and sin. It kind of makes me feel better. <laughs> it's it's got to put that stuff off. Um, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That's another tough one. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace. Under the hearers. Now, wouldn't that be great to put into the, the, the courtrooms? I'm not for this crowd that wants to take the Ten Commands out of the courtroom. I'm not for it. But if I had a choice, I'd love to put it in Ephesians 4. That cover a lot of stuff. I'm telling you, this stuff in Ephesians 4 that we get in the New Testament from Jesus Christ and from this, this you know, it, it's a lot deeper than the Ten Commandments. It's a lot deeper than thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. I mean, imagine. Um, look at 29. Let no corrupt communication. That's a lot deeper than. Telling your kids just not to use their tongue to lie. <laughs> Stop. Um, how are we doing uh, if, if uh, married couples? <laughs> how are we doing, married folks? That's a tough one. You've got a spouse. You've got kids. You've got work. You've got house chores. I mean, it, this idea of growing in the Lord for Christian growth has to do with a putting off and a putting on. Put it all away. Here's our challenge. I'll, I'll take the challenge to 21, 2021. Not lying in any way, shape or form in any situation. Now, that's tough. That's tough. Because, you know, as soon as I say it, I think of when I go into Walmart and they, they, tell me, they, they tell me to put on a mask. I don't want to put on a mask. Why not? Um, I've got a medical condition. <laughs> Now, I can, you, look, I'm not saying I'm for all these restrictions. I'm not. That's not what this is about. I'm just saying it's hard. And I'm just trying to draw out that as an analogy to say Christian growth is a lot more than just coming to church on Sunday, reading your Bible and saying, hey, I, I love the Lord. It's about abiding in him. It's about putting stuff off, putting stuff on. And then let's look at let's look at two more. One is confessing sin. Let's go over to first John. This will be the third one. We'll go to first John chapter number one. You saved, I'm saved. You're a believer, born again, child of God. I am. Guess what we do? We sin. <laughs> Yeah, even when we're saved. And when your children get saved, whether it's four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or 13, whatever age your child gets saved, and, and I praise, pray to God that they would get saved at a young age. But guess what you're going to find out? After we all celebrate and praise God and rejoice around the fact that someone's young one trusted Jesus Christ. Guess what we're going to find out after church? They sinned. <laughs> brother hit sister. Sister took brother's toy. We sinned. All of us do. Now let's read at verse number five. First John one, verse number five. This, okay, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, all of us, when we sin, we're not walking in the light. We're not abiding in Christ. We're walking in the darkness. Every time a believer sins. Confession. We looked at abiding in Christ. We looked at um, putting off and putting on. The third thing we're looking at now is confessing sin helps us to grow as a Christian. It keeps us in the light and it keeps us with within fellowship with our Lord. I want fellowship with God. People all messed up about loneliness and depression because of the coronavirus and the lockdowns. And that's a real thing. I mean, that's God designed us to gather together. It's just how we were made. And, and so this this idea of just trying to close people down and close people up and shut them in and, and isolate them. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Even if we didn't have any restrictions and people decide they just want to stay out of fellowship at church and that whole thing. Fellowship is needed. And we need that with God. It can't just be people. Even Christian people. And not with God. Meaning we need personal prayer time. Personal devotion. We need to fellowship with our God. We need to confess sin to him. Fellowship with God. We walk with him in the light. Now, what does confession mean? It means don't make excuses. Don't blame others. Agree with God that you're wrong. Who did Adam blame? Eve, his wife. <laughs> we got to be careful because... I know, ladies, you would, you know, just that's right. That's my husband. He's always blaming me. And we do do that. <laughs> we do. What's wrong? I don't know. My wife did something. I don't know. We do that. We follow after that pattern. But I'm telling you, as a race, as, as human, as a human race, all of us, men, women, boys and girls, we follow after that Adamic nature of I'm going to blame somebody else. It's somebody else's fault. And here's how we do it. We use our age. I'm too, well, it, it, my excuse is it's, I'm too old. I'm too young. We use our background. Well, you just don't know where I've come from. We use our parents. You just don't know what my parents did to me. We use our circumstances. You just don't know if you had to live like I had to live. Or here's the one that's a popular one. Well, I'm just having a bad day. We all do. <laughs> But let's not use that as an excuse to sin. The alarm clock doesn't go off. Okay, you're having a bad day. You're late for work. Don't sin by lying to your boss and saying, well, my wife or, well, I, let's own up. Let's take the blame and say, I'm wrong. Here's what I did that was wrong. Or just be honest with the boss and say, honestly, I know this is a childish excuse, but here's really what happened. My alarm clock didn't go off and it's my fault. First John 1 verse number nine, if we confess our sins, look at God's promise. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, how do you lay claim to that promise? You confess. We abide in Christ. We put off and put on and we confess. Well, doesn't God just get tired of forgiving us? Let's go to Matthew 18. Everybody knows Matthew 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but 
until 70 times 7. That's a lot. Now, if that's Jesus's, if that's God's expectation for us, I think our God is perfectly capable of forgiving us so much more than that. <laughs> so much more than his expectation for us with each other. Confess to make it right. Um, let's go back to the Old Testament and let's get Lamentations. After Jeremiah comes Lamentations chapter 3. And then let's get the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Lamentations 3 and Hebrews 4. Let's do Lamentations 3 first and let's get verse number uh, 22. Look what it says. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Praise God. That's a beautiful, beautiful passage of God's holy word. Hebrews chapter 4. Another great one. They're all great. But Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. And here it is. For we not for we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. And here it is. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. God extends mercy. He is there. He wants to forgive. Just confess. And every single time he's there. Make it right. Be put in the light. And watch this. This, this is a claim. Uh, let's go to Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians 1. This is a claim that you can lay hold of. You can claim this promise. This is a name it and claim it right here. Name it and claim it. It's a promise that God says that, that he, it's a promise that God made. And we should lay hold and claim every promise that God has given to us. Look at this. The promise of forgiveness. Ephesians 1. Uh. Okay, okay, here it is. Blessed be the God, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, here's what I want you to name and claim. A spiritual blessing. You can obtain forgiveness from God from your sins and grow as a Christian by confessing your sin. You'll be now in the light. You'll receive the forgiveness and you'll get the claim to the spiritual blessing. We can claim these spiritual blessings. Now, these name it and claim it preachers with this health, wealth and prosperity gospel. They're all a bunch of liars and they don't know what they're talking about. And I don't even know why they have a following except people love the lust after the flesh. All right, last one. Press toward the mark. Let's get Philippians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians chapter number three. So what do we have? We have abiding in Christ. We have the putting off and the putting on. We have, uh, what do we have? We have confessing your sins. And now lastly... Philippians chapter 3, verse number 13. Here it is. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Glory 
to his name. Put our sin behind us and march forward. Press on. Reach toward. Don't dwell on past failures. Look ahead. Don't wallow in past sins and past mistakes. Keep your eye on the prize and press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So that's part two of Christian growth. We need to abide in Christ, put off the former man, put on the new, confess our sins and make sure we're walking in the light. Lay claim to the promise of God's forgiveness. He's faithful and just to forgive us. And don't look back. Don't dwell on past mistakes. Press toward the mark 